Hey, what's smoking? It's about to be these ribs. Boy, don't they look tasty. Almost good enough to eat right now. A couple of things I want to tell you about these ribs. And here you have the opportunity to see a little bit of Big Daddy today. I stepped up my game. But right now, hopefully it's not too late. Publix has got their ribs on sale. Look at that. See that fat? Just the perfect amount. There's a lot to be said about different styles of ribs, baby backs, and, you know, spares, St. Louis cut. I'll tell you what, if you want to cook consistently, the St. Louis cut's the best. And you look, see the weight? Three pounds. Man, you can't beat a slab of ribs. Nine dollars? Where are you going to get that? And after I get done cooking these things, you're going to be like, I want Big Daddy's ribs. All right. I'm not going to show you all the cleaning. It's not going to be a whole lot of trimming. Uh, if there is, I'll come back and show you all. Sometimes it'll be a little bit too much fat on on the, uh, the tail end of the, the ribs. You want to cut that off. Nobody likes to eat too much fat. I'm going to have some fat for it to go ahead and render down, give you good flavor. But uh, there's nothing that can beat a good, around three, three pound St. Louis ribs are about right. If you get any less than that, there's not enough meat on there, or uh, they, just, they just don't taste right. Three to three and a half is about as big as you're going to get on a St. Louis cut rib. Good, even if it's from a butcher. And the only difference is if you want to do competition style ribs, you want to go to a butcher to be able to pick it out because they're pretty picky about the shape of their bones. They want the, all the bones straight, all that, but who cares when it comes down to eating it? You just really want to eat the ribs, plain and simple. All right, now seasoning wise, we're going to make two different kind of ribs uh, tomorrow. And I got some company coming in, some of my peeps. We're going to make my old fashioned uh, savory, hot and spicy type of rib. And uh, I tell you what, uh, you look at that seasoning on the right. You know, I've made my own seasoning. I've done my various styles. And, uh, when it comes down to rib rubs, there's some, you know, a wide variety. There's probably a billion of them out there now. And uh, I just find one that I think tastes good I can doctor to, to come up to what I want it to taste like and just simply go from there. You know, the cheaper you go, sometimes the more salty they are. You don't want that too much, because, uh, especially if you want to put it on early. Uh, it's going to be too salty. You don't, you don't want that. It's not going to make a good rib. Uh, I'll show you a little bit of that a little bit later. And now this is my new, my newer style. My girls like this a little bit more. Uh, this is going to be my sweet, and trust me, this doggone thing comes out sweet. Right here is Killer Bee, and it's Chipotle. I have a Killer Bee honey uh, flavored rub. doesn't have the Chipotle in it. Honestly, even with the Chipotle, it's not really spicy. It's going to come out on the sweet, but uh, when you get to the end, it's going to have just a little bit of a, of a kick to it, but... Really not much. Um, I'm not a big sweet, sweet rib eater. So I need a little bit of heat in there somewhere. And as I, I go through these different uh, preparations for the sweet and the heat, uh, between this one, which is going to be my sweeter one, and this one, which is going to be my old-fashioned, been doing for about 20 years, uh, style rib. Uh, this is definitely going to be different than what you've seen anyone do. I've been through a million videos. You know, you're never going to see anybody prepare ribs uh, quite like you're, you're watching me. And I had to think about it a couple times. I think, should I put it on out there? But in the end, I want you to love your doggone ribs. Don't sit here and come up with no sunnies or no... $40 dog on ribs that don't taste good. 
you do these ribs and you watch and do it like Big Daddy does and these things are going to come out right. Right, <clears throat> we got the ribs clean. Had to do some trimming. Normally don't have to with the uh, Publix ribs. Uh, don't have to be perfect with them. Uh, just think about when you're biting into a rib, what do you want to eat when you bite into it? So you need some fat. Most of it's going to render off, but sometimes depending on which rib you get, they have a little bit more fat, what have you, uh, a little bit more silver skin, a little bit's not bad. I've never really tasted a difference. Uh, well, basically we took the membrane off the back uh, and we've rinsed them down to kind of clean them. Now I'm going to show you something that's a little bit different than what you've ever seen on a YouTube video. Hot sauce. This rib right here is going to be designated as our savory or spicy uh, type of rib. And I've seen a bazillion different ways that people do it. And I've been doing this for 20, 20 years, easily. Uh, I want to say 40, but I'm only 42. But we've seen many different ways to put stuff on ribs, a lot of used mustard, whatever. The mustard doesn't really change the flavor, but I want hot, I want savory, I want something that uh, you're gonna know this rib's a little bit different. And I've never shown this before, but it's pretty simple. You just simply put some hot sauce all the way down it, and make sure you use this brand. Uh, I'm not gonna say the brand. Maybe I should cover it. Ooh, 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 ooh. They're not paying me. I've used different ones. Uh, some are better on chicken, such and such. Um, but Louisiana, they just, they just got it right, man. They just got it right. And you want to get it on both sides. I'm going to flip it over. You see, I got the membrane off of it. The back side, everybody says, oh, it don't matter as much. I treat it the same. Like when you bite into it, what side is usually the first side that touches your tongue, it's usually the bottom. So you got different theories. People say different things on there. Uh, make sure you cover both sides of it well. Now, I guess I'm gonna make a little bit of mess. I'm gonna rinse my hand off before I touch my seasoning. <clears throat> my paper towel. Now, when you get that, you have different type of chemical reactions, different things that happen. And that's why seasoning and marinating work so well. Uh, meat's a fantastic thing. It takes a lot of science and figuring stuff out along the way. What we want to do is to kind of temper this hot sauce because you just don't want to taste hot sauce when you got it in there. You will put a little bit of garlic on there. And what the garlic does is kind of quiets it up a little bit. And it, it, it slows the process, so to speak, down. And I don't put as much on the back side as I will on the front. Uh, you got a little bit more fat there. It doesn't, doesn't get in as much. And then we want to take, bam! Everybody says it, bam! And the reason I like this, and I've tried a lot of other products, is there's a lot of seasoning in here, but there's not a lot of salt. Salt is a killer when you're trying to do things a long time in advance. If you get seasoning that has a bunch of salt in it, if you put it on too early, you're never going to taste this seasoning. When you go to bite into it, you're going to taste the salt. <clears throat> so what I want to do is this is kind of the, the pre-marinade, so to speak, because you'll see tomorrow when I light this up, right before it's time to cook, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put the rib, rib rub on, which is this. This is a more conventional style rib rub. But this is not conventional. That's my secret. Don't tell anybody. I might get a bazillion votes off of that. All right, we got the back side on here. You got the hot sauce, Louisiana preferably. It's got more vinegar. The vinegar gets in there better. Um, but it doesn't add too much salt. Some of these Generic ones and that have too much salt, and salt is the key. All right, I'm gonna flip this over. 
Do the same thing on this side. And on this, I'll put more on this side. This is so the meat side. It doesn't have as much fat. Doesn't have to worry about the backing bones of that. Put a little bit more on this side. Rub it in. Because I want this side. This is this is your money side. And I don't rub it once I get seasoning, but I like this vinegar in there. <clears throat> this vinegar and hot sauce. I'll rinse my hand again. That's for all you vegetarians out there that I'm gonna kill the world touching pork. Alright, I'm gonna put a little bit more of this garlic, same thing. It's gonna kind of temper the hot, but it just does something for the flavor of it. And you want garlic, not garlic salt. Remember, the longer you marinate things, you do not want salt on there. And all you want to taste at the end salt. I don't care what you put on it. Now we're going, bam! I'm going to hit this thing a little bit. You can almost see the meat turning a little bit gray as I do this. I don't do too much, but I like it because it has a lot of savory, a lot of savory flavors in there. Uh, biggest one is that paprika, that black pepper, salt, just a little bit. And it says other seasonings. They don't tell you what everything in here. I'm not telling you. That's just love for pork. All right, what we're going to do now is uh, because this has hot sauce on it, I don't like wrapping it in foil, putting it in a bowl, something like that. I want to kind of roll this thing into a wheel and put it in a Ziploc bag. The acid does not eat through the plastic, but my worries is being so acidic, if you were to wrap this thing in foil overnight, that it would get some of that metal flavor. So we don't want that metal flavor in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna simply roll this thing up, kind of like a pinwheel. And then we're gonna feed this into a gallon Ziploc bag. There's no pretty, no clean way to do it. Simply done. And we're gonna let that thing sit overnight. Like I said, the company's coming tomorrow. We're gonna to start grilling in the morning. Uh, coming around four or five o'clock is what we told them. Um, so I wanted to let this thing sit overnight, and then depending on how hot and that, I decide to cook it tomorrow. It's gonna to be anywhere between four and a half, uh, six hours total grilling time on that give me a second we're going to come back and i'll show you exactly the simple way i do these sweet sweet ribs uh so give me a minute after i clean up a little bit come right back in this pan because i don't want any of that spicy on there all right see you in a second all right yo a little bit of cleanup made sure that when we're going to change the flavor of these ribs these are actually the simplest I've tried many things with the, the savory and spicy over the years. This is actually the simplest since I found this seasoning uh, for sweet. I've done it a few other ways. Uh, but I tell you, this Cosmos Killer Bee Chipotle, and you can get it many places, but uh, Barbecue Superstore, uh, that's a good place to get it. And they have a really good shipping cost. You can buy a lot of things and only have to pay 10 bucks for shipping which uh, saves you from buying from other sites uh, because some of the places want to charge you per item and that but uh, barbecue superstore is a great place to get this a great rub killer bees chipotle and simply all we're going to do is i always start backside because when i flip it i want everything to stay on the top side uh, this is what kind of hits your mouth first but that top side is what gets down into into the bones down deep uh, inside of the whatever you're cooking with all right so we're going to just simply put a little on here there's really no salt in this you're going to hear that you're going to hear me say that a lot because uh because some of these cheaper you use these cheaper rubs and when they have too much salt man i i, I made that mistake one time and i told myself uh I'm either going to make my own, and I did for years. Uh, I tell you, there's somebody out there now, you just 
you know, you might waste a little bit of money or spend a little, I don't know about wasting because most of them are pretty good now, but uh, you might spend a little bit of money on a different type of rub, but once you get there and, uh, and find the one you want, and, uh, and you like it, it's just like money. Somebody give you free money. You don't have to work for it. That's what it's all about. That's what some of these rubs are. This one here, man, I could have probably spent the next 500 years trying to figure out how to do this rub and stay straight up. I, I couldn't make a rub like this. Not without the expertise. I'll just put a little bit more on the, on the top side. This, this is the money side. So to speak, that's what you when you go to contest and that. This is this what gonna win you. It builds bark. It's got a lot of flavor, and the, the back part is important. But this top part, this is your money. You want to cover. You want to paint it like a canvas. You want this thing to. If you think you're gonna take a bite of it, you want to taste that seasoning in every single one of these bites. season up there in that curve. And if you don't season it right now, uh, you're going to have a mismatch of uh, different flavors. You might bite this this bite of the rib, that bite of the rib, and they, they taste different. You don't want this. You don't want to give somebody the middle part of the rib and it don't taste as good as the front or the back side. That's not good. You're going to give your, uh, your company a different experience. So you want to make sure you take your time and do that. Basically what I'm going to do is just fold this up. I'm going to put foil on here. There's no acids really in this seasoning. So I don't have to worry about uh, putting a foil taste into it like I would uh, the one with the hot sauce. So basically I'm going to wrap this up and we're going to keep this thing overnight. And I'll be back tomorrow once we uh, get to uh, doing the final process. You'll see I got a couple of little different touches for each one of these before we end up putting them on the smoker itself. All right, so I'll see y'all uh, back tomorrow. I'm gonna decide to put this thing on this smoker. Peace out.